The 7th of May 1945, Adolf Hitler has been dead for a week and Berlin captured by the Red Army five days previously. The German armies in the Netherlands, Denmark and northwest Germany have surrendered to the British two days previously. The day before, the 6th of May, German forces in Bavaria and southern Germany had surrendered to the United States. Fighting continues against the Soviets in eastern Austria and western Czechoslovakia, Croatia and Mecklenburg in Germany. The Germans have begun brutally suppressing the Prague uprising even with complete surrender imminent. The new leader of Germany, Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, is trying to delay the surrender as long as possible so that German soldiers and civilians can move west away from Soviet captivity. The Western Allies grow impatient and on the 6th of May, Dönitz's representative to Eisenhower's HQ at Reims, France, Admiral von Friedeberg, was told that the Allies demand immediate, simultaneous and unconditional surrender on all fronts. But even at this late date, Dönitz's U-boat service continues to carry out war operations against the Allies. Although Dönitz had issued an order on the morning of the 4th of May instructing all U-boats to stop all hostile actions against Allied shipping, this order had not been received by all of the 64 U-boats still at sea. A few continued with active operations against the enemy until the very end of the war. As surrender negotiations move into the last full day of World War II, the 7th of May, three boats carry out their combat orders to the letter and launch the very last U-boat attacks of five years of war. The Germans had already lost the Battle of the Atlantic and towards the end of the war initiated an inshore submarine campaign around the British Isles, as well as introducing their latest types of U-boat, the Type 21 and 23 Electro boats, the first really modern submarines. But rather than being the hunters, the U-boats, due primarily to British anti-submarine technology and the cracking of the Enigma code, were now the hunted. They were forced to remain submerged for longer periods and were subjected to ferocious sea and air attacks whenever they launched torpedo attacks on ships. The Germans hoped that their new electro boats, with higher underwater performances, enabling them to outrun Allied warships, would turn the tide, but they were introduced too late and in too few numbers to have an effect on the outcome of the war. On the morning of the 7th of May, U-320, a modified Type 7C-41 U-boat under the command of Oberleutnant Zerze Heinz Emrich, was submerged in the North Sea, two days into its first operational tour. Unfortunately for Emrich, U-320 was detected by a patrolling RAF Catalina aircraft, which attacked immediately, dropping a pattern of depth charges. U-320 was damaged in the attack, and the circling Catalina noted patches of oil on the surface. The pilot dropped sonoboys, a device used to detect underwater sounds, and recorded sounds of hammering. But short on fuel, the Catalina departed the scene. Emrich started back towards his base in Norway, but the U-boat was doomed. U-320 was abandoned and scuttled by her crew on the 8th of May off the Norwegian coast. Emrick and his crew all surviving. Soon after the Catalina attacked U-320, another Type 7C-41 U-boat, the U-1023, operating off Portland Bill, Dorset, on England's south coast, came to periscope depth, and her skipper, Captain Leutnant Heinrich Schröteler, espied an interesting target. Schröteler, an ardent Nazi, had been awarded the Knight's Cross on the 2nd of May and had previously commanded U-667. Through his periscope, Schröteler saw a group of Norwegian minesweepers. He selected a target and began his attack, successfully torpedoing the NYMS-382, a small 335-ton vessel, killing 22 of her crew. The minesweeper sank rapidly and U-1023 slunk silently away without being detected. Around the same time U-1023 was making her attack, a very special U-boat was about to prove its deadly potential. U-2336, a Type 23 electro boat, was seven days into its first combat patrol off the Scottish coast and had entered the Firth of Forth, busy with Allied shipping. 
The Type 23 was a specially designed inshore U-boat at 234 tons, small, fast and difficult to detect with a crew of just 18 and only two torpedoes. 63 were built or under construction when the war ended out of 980 planned vessels but only six actually saw combat. Operating around the Scottish coast, they had sunk two ships so far. U-2336 had been commissioned in September 1944 and departed Larvik in Norway on the 1st of May on her only war patrol, commanded by Captain Lieutenant Emil Klusmeier. U-2336 had no success until the 7th of May, when Klusmeier happened upon convoy EN-491, sailing from Scotland to Belfast in Northern Ireland. The convoy consisted of five ships, and U-2336 attacked off the Isle of May in the Firth of Forth. The first torpedo struck the 1,791-ton Norwegian freighter Sneiland 1, which blew up almost instantaneously and sank in two minutes, taking with her the captain and six crewmen. Klusmeier now launched his second and last torpedo, hitting the 2,878-ton British freighter Avondale Park, killing two crewmen. The rest of the crew managed to abandon ship, and U-2336 departed the scene at high speed, avoiding detection. There has been some controversy surrounding U-2336's attacks over whether Klusmeier had received Dernitz's order to cease fire and chosen deliberately to ignore it and prove the potential of the Type 23 in combat. Klusmeier always denied he had received the order. The attack by U-2336 was the very last U-boat attack of World War II. U-1023, which had sunk the Norwegian minesweeper off the Dorset coast, surrendered at Weymouth on the 10th of May 1945. She was sunk as part of Operation Deadlight, a Royal Navy operation to dispose of captured U-boats. She went down on the 7th of January 1946. U-2336 met a similar fate. Surrendered on the 15th of May, she was sunk as a target by naval gunfire on the 3rd of January 1946 off Northern Ireland. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share and support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.